Hello everybody, uh, thought I'd do a quick video today to show you uh, how to replace uh, this trigger or uh, this trigger. This seems to be kind of one of those uh, common uh, questions on how to uh, that comes up. Uh, so uh, first thing we're going to have to do is uh, we'll have to completely disassemble this uh, pistol. If uh, that's something that you're not overly uh, confident with, then uh, uh, you can uh, take your pistol to a gunsmith and uh, have them do it. Because uh, it is something that you're going to have to be confident in doing because uh, we will have to uh, tear this uh, 1911 down uh, to the basic frame uh, to uh, change the uh, trigger out. Uh, first thing we're going to go ahead and do is uh, remove the slide. Uh, simple field strip uh, procedures on this to accomplish it. We'll move the uh, slide barrel out of our way and uh, concentrate just solely on the frame here, which is uh, what we're wanting to do. Uh, next thing we'll go ahead and do is uh, remove our grips. Um, most of the time it's not something that absolutely has to be done. However, uh, in this case, uh, it will open up the frame so that uh, we can show you where uh, some of the parts go. And sometimes it's just easier to have it. It's just one set of parts that's out of the way for us to go ahead and do that. These uh, Packmore wraparound grips just come off with the four screws. Uh, next thing we'll need to do is uh, remove this mainspring housing, which is this part right here. Uh, to do that, we uh, take the mainspring housing pin and uh, punch it out of the frame. Once it's out, we'll set it aside, remove the main spring housing. I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail about the uh, breakdown of this frame simply because there are plenty of videos out there, including uh, ones that I've put on there. So uh, grip safety will come out next, set it aside, plunger spring and plunger spring pins, set them aside. That allows us to move the grip safety. Uh, next part out will be the sear spring. Sear spring, set it aside. Next pin we'll remove is the uh, larger of these two pins here. Uh, the larger one that uh, holds the uh, hammer and the hammer bow into place. And uh, then the smaller pin. The smaller pin of the two holds the uh, sear and disconnector. We'll set those parts aside. What we're left with is the uh, basic frame here, and uh, you can see the uh, back of the trigger bow sets in here. Uh, to remove that trigger bow, we have to take out the magazine release, which is right here. Uh, to do that, just push that magazine release out slightly, and a small screwdriver removes the screw, and that uh, removes the uh, magazine release out. Once the magazine release is out, the uh, trigger just slides out the back of the frame in one motion. And what you're left with is the uh, old trigger and your basic frame. Uh, what we're going to do is replace that with this new trigger. Now one of the things that we've uh, already done with this new trigger is, is we've gone ahead and fit it to the frame to uh, make the video as uh, short as we can. Um, and what we've had to do is we've had to file off the bottom side and the top side of the, this trigger. Um, they are usually made oversized. Uh, and what I've done is I've uh, taken this and just uh, as I've taken it out I've filed one swipe off of uh, the top and one swipe off the bottom and uh, then come back and test fit each time until I had that uh, to where it was fitting in there with very little upward and you know, up and down movement to the trigger. It does have some. I uh, probably took off about one swipe too many, but uh, that's what I did to ensure that that was a tight fit. One of the other things I've done also 
to this frame uh, to prepare it for this new trigger was I went ahead and I polished up uh, these side rails on both sides of the frame or uh, the trigger bow itself. Um, they have a tool that you can use to form this trigger bow. Um, not sure what the cost is on it uh, or you can do it manually just by squeezing it and, and expanding it out. Uh, what you want is the uh, the trigger bow will actually go into these two slots in the back of the frame right here and there are uh, channels for it to slide into. When that is in the pistol frame itself kind of see here. I'm not sure if I can get the best light on it or not. Let me stop here and I'll get a uh, separate handheld light that I can shine in there. Alright, what you can see inside the frame here is uh, the uh, channel that that trigger bow sets into. And uh, you can take a uh, stone and stone that out to uh, smooth it up as much as possible. Also be seen here on this side. And uh, once you stone that out and gotten it smooth with the uh, polish on the trigger bow that uh, allows for a very smooth trigger pull. So what uh, once you've gotten that smooth to your liking just go ahead and install your new trigger. And like I say, it should just be basically free in there. The freer it is, the better. Obviously, you can adjust your movement up and down by what you take off the top and the bottom of the trigger housing itself. Uh, but then, uh, basically, assembly is just a reverse procedure. Put your uh, magazine release back in. And... Check it for function. Uh, once you've gone ahead and done that, you might go ahead and just take a magazine, put it in there, and make sure you still have that free trigger movement. Because what can happen is, is as you squeeze in on that bow, you can actually restrict that magazine movement. Let me give you an example here. See, it fits very tight. A lot of times you'll have uh, see old magazines with uh, wear marks on them, and what that's from is that's from the uh, inside of the trigger bow rubbing up against the magazine. So we've got the uh, magazine release installed. We've uh, checked it for function. We've got uh, good function with that. Uh, next step, like I say, it's just going to be a, a reverse of the uh, teardown procedure. We'll go back in with our uh, sear and disconnector. This is always a tricky part of the procedure. We'll see how lucky I am. Yeah, pretty lucky this time around. Got our first shot. Uh, then we'll follow that up with the uh, hammer and uh, the uh, large hammer pin. Flip that out of our way. Put our uh, sear spring back in. One of the tricks with the uh, sear spring is always making sure that you got all the legs back where you want them. Kind of give you a bit of a close up here to uh, show you how those are lined up on their various legs. Then uh, go ahead and uh, flip our hammer bow down into position, engage the uh, mainspring housing with that. We're not going to go ahead and pin that yet though. Uh, next thing we want to do is go ahead and install our uh, grip safety. And that is held in place with the uh, thumb safety. We need to have our hammer back in the firing position to install that. I do need to put the uh, plunger spring and uh, pins back in place first though. Once we've got that in, we'll just um, push our plunger spring housing, our spring and pins in to uh, install our grip safety and uh, then we're ready to go ahead and get that main spring housing back into position. So we've got
got the uh, mainspring housing pin back in. We'll go ahead and set it flush. Then we're ready to install our grips back. Just line them up on the bushing grip bushings. Put our four grip screws back into place. Like I say, this can be done on most pistols without removing the grip panels. However, uh, removing them does uh, two things. It uh, allows you access to see. All right, well, sorry about that. Uh, had battery die on us, so I had to go uh, recharge it up. Anyway, uh, like I say, what we'll do is uh, finish installing these grips, and uh, that will uh, complete the assembly of our frame back to uh, the way it should be. Uh, and just to finish up the pistol, uh, go ahead and uh, put the slide and get the associated parts back on. And like I say, this is simple simple field strip procedure here so this shouldn't be anything uh, that too unfamiliar with you back to the assembly notch slide forward recoil spring plug back in locked in place now since we did go ahead and change the trigger uh, obviously it's uh, back to function tests again grip safety works Thumb safety working. And disconnector is functioning fine. Okay, well, that uh, was a quick and simple way uh, video on uh, how to uh, replace your uh, trigger if you uh, want to go to a little bit fancier trigger. Uh, like I say, there is a lot of fiddling uh, with uh, getting the fit just right that I uh, didn't. Uh, go ahead and show you just because it's time consuming and wastes a lot of videotape. Uh, but beyond that, uh, uh, that's the basic procedure. Hope you find this interesting. We'll talk to you later. Have a good day.